So I am Chelsea. If you are not familiar, we are uh, with Lulu today. We're going to be presenting about how to write an outline for a nonfiction book. So we're very excited uh, to get into this. I don't want to take up too much time, so I'll just do a couple quick housekeeping things. You guys have already found the chat. You always do. Very exciting. So hello to everyone. Uh, let's see. Cassandra started off first. So congratulations. Thanks for that. You get a gold star. Hello, everyone. You're tuning in from Chicago, California, New Mexico, Maryland. Wow, nice. I'm in uh, North Carolina, western, western North Carolina in the mountains right now. I see some Raleigh, Connecticut, Oregon. Well, regardless of where you are hailing from, thank you so much for choosing to spend some time with us today. Um, you found the chat. Drop your questions in there. I am joined by Stephanie Newell Ross today, so I'm very excited to have her on. If you have any questions for Stephanie, then you can drop them in the Q&A tab and we will answer them at the end. I also want to let everyone know that this is being recorded. And so if you have to leave early or if you join late, everyone will get a recording of today's presentation sent to their email. We will also post it on our YouTube channel. So you're not missing anything. We will get that recording to you. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our wonderful guest. So Stephanie has established a reputation as a highly sought after writing coach for first time authors seeking guidance on how to write and publish their first nonfiction book. With over 2 million views on YouTube via the Life of a Writer channel, she has helped thousands of authors to find their authentic voice and effectively convey their message through their writing. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us. Definitely check out her YouTube channel if you haven't already. And with that, I'm going to turn it on over. So thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you, Chelsea. So I am so excited to be presenting this webinar today, how to write an outline for your nonfiction book, because this is one of the first steps that first time writers often take in the writing process. But they're either very overwhelmed by the process, they don't know how to structure their outline, or they just don't know the value of creating an outline. So in this presentation, I am going to be giving you a simplistic way to write your outline. And I'm, I want you to take notes because I'm going to be given a lot of tips and suggestions on how to do this. But I first want to start off with who I am and who is presenting this webinar. So again, my name is Stephanie Newell Ross. I am a writing coach and I coach first time nonfiction writers on how to write, publish and market their very first books. I am also a developmental editor, which basically I'm the, one of the first editors to look at your manuscript after you finish completing it. And I am looking at it through the lens of your genre as well as your target audience and giving you feedback on the structure, the writing voice, the tone, or any big picture questions you have about what you've written. At that point, I will give you feedback on your strengths and weaknesses and give you the next steps that you need to take to either get you to your next draft or your final draft, depending on where and when you submitted it. Um, I'm also an author, so I have 20 books, uh, paperbacks, digital products, as well as eBooks, but I'm most known for my um, book, How to Write Your First Book, which I am super proud of. And then as Chelsea mentioned, I'm also a YouTuber. So I have the Life of a Writer channel on YouTube and on there, I'm most known for my tech videos for first time writers. So I do a lot of videos on um, Microsoft Word and Google Docs and how to format your manuscript there. I do some videos on the best apps and the best software. But specifically, I have a love for nonfiction authors. So I do a lot of videos on tips for self-help writers as well as memoir writers and some of the common mistakes that they make. So that brings me to today, which is that there are two methods for writing a book. And this is one of the bigger mistakes that I see first time authors make, which is that they don't start their book with an outline. Now, there isn't necessarily a right or a wrong way to start your book but there is an easier way to start your book. So I wanna talk about the two methods for writing a book. Um, the first method is called the pantser method. So the pantser is someone who writes by the seat of their pants, which basically means that they don't plan their book or they plan very little of their book. The second method is the outlining method. Now this is more of a structure plan that organizes your main ideas and supporting details in a logical and coherent manner. So I like to share my experience writing my first book. 
Um, when I was writing my first book, I was already, I had a lot of experience with writing. So I was a freelance entertainment um, writer for an online magazine. So I had a good idea of the writing process. And during that period of time, I came up with an idea for a fiction book that I wanted to write. So I went online and I did a lot of research and a lot of the veteran authors were suggesting that you start your book with an outline. And even though I read this tip over and over again, it just didn't resonate with me. I felt like it would take away some of my creativity and that it wouldn't be as fun a process. So I went ahead and started writing my book. And let me just tell you that it took me a really long time to write my book because I didn't know the direction in which my book was going. So it hindered my creativity. It did the exact opposite of what I thought it would do. Um, it stopped me from being consistent. I didn't feel as motivated. And I wish I would have paid more attention, but I didn't know that I would end up becoming a writing coach. But it took me years to complete my manuscript because I really just did not know the direction that I was taking my manuscript. So every single time I sat down to my computer, I was even surprised by what was happening with my characters because I did not have an idea of where I was going with my manuscript. So every single book that I wrote after that, which have all been nonfiction books, I made the decision to instead use an outline. And it has been such an easier process because I know what is going to happen in every chapter. It helped with the consistency. It helped with me feeling motivated. Um, it limited writer's block. You know, there, there were times when I still experienced writer's block, but for the most part, it helped me out a lot. So I really want to talk about who is an outline perfect for. So first of all, it's perfect for every writer. No matter your genre, an outline is going to be beneficial to you. It's going to be helpful for first time writers who need to organize their thoughts, their ideas, their research and their notes. Next is going to be perfect for somebody that's struggling with consistency um, because you can map out a clear timeline for how you will get your book written. So as I was saying earlier, I struggled with consistency because I didn't know the direction in which I was taking my manuscript. But let's say, for example, you know you have to write 12 chapters. If you have a plan, you can map those 12 chapters out over a year or whatever your time frame is so that you have a clear timeline for how you will get your book written. Um, next, it, your outline is perfect for someone who wants to save time and stress. So it allows you to have a clear plan in place that can save you time and reduce stress by limiting writer's block and ensuring that you don't miss any of the important points that you want to include in your manuscript. So for most of us, we are busy, we have busy schedules, and uh, writing by the seat of your pants makes it kind of difficult because you are trying to just figure out what you're going to write. So having a roadmap for your manuscript really is going to save you time because it's going to help you to write more efficiently and it's going to help you to write faster. So there's a few things that I want you to remember um, in this process. Number one, an outline is not perfect. I want to say that again. An outline is not perfect. It is a flexible tool that can be used and adjusted and modified as needed to accommodate any new ideas or changes that you may have in the writing process. So I want you to think of your outline more as a work in progress. If you think about it, let's say you've decided that you're going to take a year to write your manuscript. So you'll be looking at this uh, manuscript for a year that manuscript may change because as you start to write more, your ideas are going to become clearer, your writing will become better, and it will be more concise. So at any time, whether it's when you first start your outline or even months later, or even at the end of the writing process, it is okay to go back and to fine tune your outline. Another thing that I want you to remember is it's not necessary to share your outline with anyone. So your outline is for you. 
Um, with that being said, I do offer a service where I brainstorm and review my clients' outlines, but that is not the majority of people. The majority of people are just going to have their outline for themselves. So you don't have to worry about things like what is the font or the font size or should I include this or is this good enough? This document is strictly for you and you can craft it in whatever way you see fit. Another thing I want you to remember is that an outline can be done at any time. So while ideally an outline should be done before you begin writing, it can be done at any time. So let's say, for example, you've already started the writing process. You're on chapter five. Do not feel like you cannot go back and create an outline. It is really OK for you to start an outline at any time. And that's because of my next point which is an outline has multiple uses. So typically we think about an outline being used for the writing of the manuscript, and that's true. But your outline can also be used as the blueprint for your table of contents, um, the content for your blog post, email newsletters, social media, and the beginning stages of your marketing. So if you really think about it, your book is going to be put in a lot of different places. And so using it as a guideline or a blueprint for all of these other pieces of content keeps you from having to recreate this and you can just repurpose the content that you already have written. So that's another important thing to remember. So as I stated earlier, I want to provide you with a simple way to create your outline. So I've come up with a three-step formula that will walk you through this process. Now, I want to encourage you to do every single step. A lot of times, especially first-time writers, they'll try to skip over some of the steps. But the reason why I want you to do every single step is because each step ties into the next steps. So first, you're going to figure out the foundational elements of your manual script and then you will actually create your outline. So I'm going to just do an overview first and then we'll go through each one of the steps. But step number one is to do research. Again, a very important step. Step number two is to create the overall vision for your book. And then step number three is to actually create your outline. All right, so let's start with step number one, do research. So there's some questions that you need to ask yourself. Every single book, no matter the genre, no matter your writing experience, is going to require that you do some level of research. Now, there's going to be some books that require a little bit more research, but every book requires research. So I definitely don't want you to step this, uh, skip this step. So the first question that you need to ask yourself is what is your book's genre? Now, for some people, this is gonna be very straightforward. They'll be able to say it's a memoir or it's self-help, but for others, it may be uh, across multiple genres, but you really need to be sure on what your genre is because this is going to help you to actually structure your outline and later, obviously, structure your manuscript. So you want to do research. You want to figure out what are the tenets of that um, particular genre. For example, if you are writing self-help, self-help requires that you have an action plan. So knowing that you would need to include that action plan in some way in your structure. So really be clear on what the tenets of that genre is and try to stick as closely to it as possible. The next question is, what is the average word count for your genre? So the traditional publishing industry has set up guidelines for the range in which your word count should be. So you want to be clear on what that word count is. So um, typically, I'll just Google it. So you might put in memoir word count and it'll give you a range or you may put in self-help word count and it'll give you a range. But you want to be clear on that, because if you are going 
the traditional publishing route, you want to stick as closely to that word count as possible. But if you're using uh, or if you're going the self-publishing route and you're using a company like Lulu, you want to you can be a little bit more flexible, but you want to know exactly what the word count is so that when you're structuring your outline, you're structuring it with that word count in mind. The next question is, who is the target audience for your book? Now, arguably, this is one of the most important questions because this is going to really help you to structure your manuscript in a way that entices and intrigues your target audience and actually gets them to want to purchase. So a lot of times, first time writers will say, my book is for everyone. And I understand why people say that. But honestly, there isn't a book written that is for everyone. There are books that are perfect for a specific audience. So you want to find the person that will gain the most value from your book. Now, that doesn't mean that other people won't purchase your book. But what it does mean is that you're writing specifically for this person. So, of course, you're going to ask questions like what is their age, their gender, their education, their career. But I want you to go even a little deeper than that. What are some of the pain points that they're dealing with? What are their interests? What are their personality traits? Who do they follow on social media? All of that information will help you to structure your outline so that you are engaging to that target audience that you're looking to purchase your book. So um, the next question is, who is your competition and what are they including in their book? Now, again, this is another one of those steps that's often skipped, but it's helpful for you to go and see the, the books that are similar to the book that you're trying to write. Now, you can, you know, look at any books, but I recommend looking at the bestsellers. And the reason why you want to look at the bestsellers is because these are the people that are finding success with their book. They've done pretty much everything right. So they have a great title. They have a good cover. They have a good book description. And likely they have good reviews as well. So I strongly recommend going and reading their book description to see how they presented the subject matter that they're writing on, looking at their actual reviews, um, not even just the five stars, but even some of the lower starred books, because in those lower starred reviews, you'll see exactly what people liked and what they disliked about the book or points that they didn't bring up that the audience wanted. And so you can find the holes or the gaps in the, the market that you can present yourself with. Also, the next question is, what additional research is required for your book? So for some people, that last question was the last step. But for other books, you may require additional research. So, for example, if you are writing a memoir, you may need to go back and do a little research on dates or places. Um, maybe you need to reference another book or another source. But it's in this step that you want to do all of your research because this research is going to help you to structure your outline and present it in a way that is appealing to your target audience. Step number two is to create the overall vision that you have for your book. So this is the step where you think about the final version of your book. So how do you see this book? Do you see it as a paperback, a hardcover, an ebook, a journal, or a workbook? And this doesn't seem like it's important in this stage, but it is important because let's say, for example, that you decided that you're going to create a journal or a workbook that would be structured differently. So you need to know that information in this step so that when you're structuring your outline, you can present that structure within that outline. The next thing that you wanna give consideration to is the book title. Now, for some people, they will have a book title in this stage. Um, I like to call it a working title because um, creating a title is a conversation all in its own, but having a working title or a couple uh, examples of a working title will help you in structuring your manuscript as well. So let's say, for example, I were creating this pretend book called How to Buy Your First Home. In my title, I've made a promise. 
So knowing my title very early in the process helps me to structure my manuscript so that I live up to that promise. So if you can in this stage, know, you know, have an idea of what your title is going to be. And if you're not, it's okay. But the more you know in this stage, the better it will be. Um, the next thing that you want to give consideration to is does your book need quotes or statistics, charts, images, affirmations, scriptures, whatever it is that you want to include? Because all of this information can be put into your outline. Step number three is to actually create your outline. So this is a step where you take all of the research, all of the foundational elements that you did in step one, and you actually create your outline. Now, in this step, you're going to have a few questions, and I'm going to answer those questions now, starting with how do I structure an outline? So in the next slide, I'm going to show you an example of an outline. But in general, you want to have a main idea, so a main idea or a topic. And then you'll also have bullet points, which are going to be your supporting details. It may be your research. It may be your quotes, your affirmations, your statistics. If you want to include an image, all of those things can be put in the different bullet points so that when you get ready to write your manuscript, you'll know exactly what goes in each one of those chapters. The next question you might have is, what should I include in my outline? So for every single person, it will be different, especially depending on the genre that you're writing. But for the most part, you know that you want to include anything that you're going to talk about within the chapter and any additional information that you need in order to get started. So one suggestion that I like to make is some people will do an outline and they'll just have one word. So in this pretend book that I'm writing, how to buy your first home, they may just put the word credit score. Um, you need to be as detailed as possible, because as I said, if the writing process takes you a year, you need to be able to go back and remember what you meant by whatever it is that you wrote. So be as detailed as possible, but don't make it where it's so overwhelming that it stops you from writing. So every single person is going to be different as far as how much they include. There's no right. There's no wrong. You know yourself. So make a decision on how much you need to include so that you know what you need to write when the time comes. The next question you'll have is, how do I organize my outline? So, of course, every genre is different and it's going to be difficult to tell you exactly how to organize. But the main thing to remember is that you need to organize your outline in a logical and coherent manner. So let's use a memoir, for example. Just because you are writing a memoir doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to share your life in a chronological order. So you may start at present day and then go back to childhood and then come back. So long as it's in a logical and coherent manner, it works. So basically that means that your reader should not be confused. As it relates to, let's say, the self-help genre, Logical is going to mean something completely different because in a self-help book, you're taking the reader from where they are currently to where they need to be. So after every chapter, a person should be in the uh, next step in the process. So logical in a self-help book is going to be a little bit different. So again, assess the genre that you're writing and make a decision on what that logical and coherent manner is based on your genre. All right, so I am going to put up an outline example. This is for my pretend book, How to Buy Your First Home. And because I am writing a how-to book, I would start this outline with an introduction. So in this introduction, I am going to share that I am a pretend uh, real estate agent. And I am going to also share with them why I decided to write the book. So maybe I would share that I've had a lot of clients and this process has been very overwhelming for them. So I wanted to create a very simplistic way for them to learn how to buy their first home. 
Um, I would also talk about my target audience's pain points. So maybe they're the first person in their family to purchase a home and they don't have a support system. So I would talk about that. And then I would talk about how my book will help. So I will share with them that I'm going to talk them through the credit process and the approval process so that by the end of this book, they will have a home. Then I will move on to my first chapter. So as you can see on the screen, I've kind of outlined this as chapter one. Um, and as I shared earlier, I didn't just put credit score. I put understanding your credit score. And the reason why I did this is because this is going to be my chapter title. Now, you can do just the main idea or you can do the chapter title as I've done in this example. Um, I make the suggestion that you go with the chapter title because, again, this will help you to see the structure of your manuscript. And it will also help you to see whether or not you put things in a logical and coherent manner. So seeing the actual chapter title will help you to see whether or not it's in a logical and coherent manner. Um, so my bullet points are going to include and these are going to be the things that I'm talking about within this chapter. What is your credit? What your credit score needs to be to qualify? And then I might also talk about Experian, Equifax and TransUnion and what a person would need to know about that. Then I will move on to chapter two. So in this chapter, I have created another chapter title. So this chapter title is Determine How Much You Can Afford. And then in this chapter, I am going to talk about mortgage payments, taxes, insurance, and upkeep. So you would keep on in this manner, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, until you get to all of the chapters that you need for your manuscript. And then because of the type of book I'm writing, I'm going to also include a conclusion. So basically, I have a beginning, I have a middle, and I have an end. So here are some of the final things to consider. First off, each chapter should focus on a main point or idea. So when you are going over your main or your outline, you may find that you don't have you have an idea, but it's not, in fact, a chapter. So I want you to look at every idea and ask yourself, is this a chapter or is this um, a paragraph? And if it's simply just a paragraph, you may make the decision to just remove that idea or you may make the decision to combine it with another chapter. So I want you to scrutinize every single idea and make the decision on whether it's an idea or an actual chapter. Um, the next thing is chapters should meet the expectation of your target audience. This is really important because you're trying to structure your manuscript to encourage people to actually purchase. So when you are um, looking at each one of your chapter ideas, think about your target audience. Is this something that they need? Is it something that they expect? Or is it something that they don't know they need? So in the example of my pretend book, How to Buy Your first home, I wouldn't include a chapter on investment properties or Airbnbs because that is not the pain point of this particular target audience. So every chapter should be looked at through the lens of does this meet the needs of your target audience? Um, we've talked about this a little bit already, but every chapter should be in a logical order. Again, it will be different for every genre, but make sure that you are putting things in a logical order. The next point is chapters don't have to be written in a chronological order. So one of the things that I love about an outline is that it allows you to jump around. So let's say, for example, you are writing a memoir. A lot of my memoir clients, they are writing about something that has happened that was traumatic. And sometimes, depending on what's happening in their personal lives or their career, they're not able to write about that particular subject matter on any given day. So having an outline allows you to jump around. So, you know, maybe you are technically on chapter two, but you're not able to write chapter two because chapter two deals with something very heavy. 
Having an outline will allow you to jump to chapter six or jump to chapter seven, what you're inspired to write or what you're motivated to write on that day. And I think that that is a benefit of using an outline. The next thing you wanna consider is does it create an engaging pace? So every single chapter should keep your reader engaged. You don't want them to just you know, start your book and then put it down because it's no longer engaging. You want them to read from the beginning to the end. So I want you to look at your outline once you've written it and really determine whether or not it is an engaging pace. How you're going to do that is by looking at to see, looking to see if it's just strictly narrative. So because you're writing nonfiction, there's opportunities to include experiences of your that you've had, experiences of other people, examples, and different things of that nature. So you can go to your outline and include those different things as bullet points so that you keep an engaging pace. And then while you're writing your actual manuscript, if there are points in your, your um, writing where you feel that it's a lull in the story, then take that out and do something different so that it remains engaging to your target audience. The next thing that you wanna consider is does it meet the overall vision that you have for your book? So in step two, I told you to give some thought to the overall vision that you have for your book. You decided whether or not you wanted it to be a journal or a workbook. As you've written your outline, has it lived up to the vision that you have for your book? So everything that you want to include, it, those quotes, those statistics, those images, have you lived up to the overall vision of your book? And if you haven't, that is an opportunity to go back and fine tune your outline as well as your manuscript. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Make sure that it includes a beginning, a middle, and an end. So some people think that a beginning, middle, and end is only for fiction stories, but a beginning, middle, and end is required for all genres. So even if you're writing self-help or a memoir or a business book or a religious book, every book needs a beginning, a middle, and an end. So you want to start with an introduction if you're writing, for example, a self-help book um, and then you want to have the chapters in the middle and then your end is going to be your conclusion which ties everything together and um, a gen in general you want to end on a positive note so you want to make sure that you include that for every single book that you write and then the last thing is to be strategic so essentially what happens is, is your outline turns into your table of contents minus all of the bullet points. So when you're really looking, and I can go back, when you're looking at your ex, uh, outline, every single chapter at some point is going to be included and it will be your table of contents. So you want to be strategic when you're naming your chapter titles because people use the table of contents as well as the introduction to make a decision on whether or not they're going to actually purchase your book. So you want to use your um, be strategic as possible and use your chapter titles to entice your target audience and encourage them to actually purchase. So if you use all of this information, this will provide you with a roadmap for your book. This will help you to be uh, on, stay on task, to stay motivated. It will limit writer's block, but most of all, it will make the process so much easier and it will help you to write faster. So I am going to turn it over for Q&A, but I first want to give you my contact details. Um, if you are looking to hire me as a writing coach, you can find me at howtowriteabookthatsales.com. I'm also on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok as The Life of a Writer. Um, and for all of you guys who are either viewing this webinar live or also in the replay, I'm offering my manuscript format and outline template. So this is compatible with both Microsoft Word and Google Docs, so you don't have to figure out how to structure um, your outline or your manuscript, but I'm offering it for um, $17 for everyone that is watching this. Um, you can use the bit.ly link that I provided or the QR code, either one, but I am open for your questions. 
All right, Stephanie, thank you so much. This is such a fantastic presentation. We're getting great feedback in the chat. A ton of information that is so helpful. I feel excited. And I saw someone say, that real estate book that you were outlining, that fake book, I would buy that. I saw <laughs> someone else say that too. Leonardo is like, I would buy that book. My husband and I are looking for a house. I'm like, that sounds like a great book. Stephanie. I don't know what it's like. Um, so if everyone, if you want to pop your questions into the q and A, I I see some of you have already done that. Um, so I will grab this one just from the chat. So uh, Alicia is asking how long or how many words should the introduction be? Oh, great question. Um, so in general, there is no exact amount of word count that it should be, but the range is usually anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 words, depending on the chapter. Um, some chapters require a little bit longer, but what you want to think about is the pacing of your book. So some chapters are going to be shorter, some chapters are going to be longer, and you'll figure that out as you start to write more. Great. Awesome. And thank you for that question. All right. And CJ is asking if one is writing a biography about a subject uh, who's deceased, where there has been a previous biography written, but the bi biography was flawed and full of inaccuracies. Um, when rewriting, does one list all the myths in the appendices or to comment on them as it is relevant to the person's chronological journey through life or do you both? So CJ, you can c clarify this if I'm getting it wrong, but basically I think you're asking if you're writing a biography of someone who there's already been one written about, do you need to address what happened in that book? Um, so Stephanie, can you speak to that at all? Um, no, your book is going to be your book and you can address whatever it is that you want to address. So if you want to address those inaccuracies, you can, but you're not, it's not required. Okay, perfect. All right, let me hop over to the Q&A tab. Okay, so Jennifer is asking, is using a timeline a good method to use? So I think that you're meaning, uh, I saw Jennifer, you commented this, that an outline and a timeline, are those interchangeable? Can you use a timeline as an outline? So when I think of a timeline, I'm thinking more like for a memoir or a biography, mm -hmm. but I, I think it, again, the outline is for you. So if that makes it easier for you, the whole idea is that it's a place where you can include your main ideas and any supporting details. So if that's a timeline for you, that's fine. And if it's an outline, that's fine as well. You just want to have a blueprint and a roadmap for where and what direction your book is going to go in. Perfect. Thank you. And thank you for that question, Jennifer. All right. Is it possible to get a ghostwriter if needed? Yes, absolutely. Um, you can definitely get a ghostwriter. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know if you had any other insight into that, but I was like, yeah, I think you could do that if you needed to. You absolutely can. All right. Uh, and Jennifer, I have one other question. Can a memoir be written in separate books or should it just be all in one? Um. I don't know. I guess technically you could write a memoir because a memoir is about a certain period in your life. So it's not the entire your entire life story. It's about certain experiences with um, that relate to a certain theme or themes. So technically, I guess you could. Um, you could write one memoir and then write another later. Yeah, I guess you could. Yeah. I think it's kind of dealer's choice, like you kind of mentioned, especially if you're self-publishing or, you know, those genre expectations, which everyone should know. But once you know them, you have a little bit more wiggle room uh, if you're going an independent publishing route at times. All right. So Steve is asking, maybe I missed it, but how do we determine the average word count for our genre? Oh, yeah. So I talked about this a little bit earlier. Typically, um, most nonfiction books are about 80,000 words, but you do want to just confirm it. So I'll usually just Google memoir, word count, self-help word count to get an idea. Um, and as we talked about, if you're going the traditional publishing route, you want to stick a little closer to that word, uh, whatever that word count is. And if you're self-publishing, you have so much more freedom in that area. Yes. All right, Steve, thank you for that question. And Angie is asking, are chapter titles necessary for memoirs or do you just use them as a reference? Um, it's not necessary for any genre. I like them because people use table of contents, which obviously starts off as your outline to make a decision on whether or not they'll purchase. So sometimes when you have something kind of generic like chapter one, chapter two, they don't know what you're going to talk about. But if you have chapter titles, it clues them in and it kind of engages your target audience and piques their interest. Yeah, perfect. And so Tanya is asking a question and let me know if you, I may be missing some of this. I think we may need some clarification, but all right. When structuring a journal, most that are available just have blank pages. How do I come up with a different type of outline that would include other information? 
Oh, so I think maybe Tanya, you're just asking how to create an outline for a journal that maybe has like you're mentioning stuff like affirmations in it, or maybe it has prompts. Um, you can let me know if that if that's on on point. But I don't know if you can speak to that at all, Stephanie, or have it. Yeah, answered. absolutely. Because I recently, I think it was the year before last, I created a, a, a journal myself. So basically what I did was I thought about what it was that I wanted to include in my journal. So one of the things that I'm kind of known for on Instagram are my affirmations. So I wanted to make sure I included affirmations. I knew that I wanted to have kind of the steps for writing a book because my journal is about how to write a book. So I just outlined it in that way. I figured out where I wanted my affirmations to go. I figured out what the structure was for how I wanted to create it. And then of course I had those blank pages. So again, it's a, about the overall vision that you have for your book and you can create it in whatever way you, you, you decide. Yes, and Tanya said that is what she was asking. So that's great that we were able to, to get that deciphered. Uh, and thank you for saying that. Cause yeah, I mean, I, I didn't realize that you could also apply an outline to a, a low or no content book as well. Um, you know, that'll help you kind of progress and get get to the finish line. All right. So thank you for that question. And Donna is asking, when are flashbacks in a memoir most effective? Oh, Donna, I feel like that's a tough one. Oh, that is a tough one. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a bigger question than an outline question. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of what I was saying. It's all about engaging your target audience. So, you know, it depends on how you're structuring your story. I think that's a much bigger question than I can answer in this setting. Mm. Um, but it, it, yeah, you can use <laughs> flashbacks, but definitely because it's not really a flashback. You're telling your story. So, mm. you know, I don't know that I would look at it as a flashback so much. Book a call with Stephanie to learn more. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's I want to dive point. into that. <laughs> yeah, that was a tough one. That's bold, Donna. Good for you for putting that out there. I feel like that's, yeah, a little bit, that could be its own presentation, I think. Um, all right. So the next question is, can you combine a memoir and self-help into one book? Yeah, I have heard that there is a, a genre that combines them both. My question to you would be, what is the goal for your book? So do you want to tell your story or do you want to share with people how to change their life in some way? So if you are leaning more towards changing their life in some way, self-help may be a better genre for you. But if you're strictly just looking to tell your own personal story, then a memoir may be a better um, option for you. Now, with that being said, you know, uh, people tend to think that in self-help, you can't share your own experiences. You can. So you can do that in both. But it's just a matter of what is your overall goal for the genre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I loved you talking about how important the target audience is and bringing everything back to that, because we tell people uh, quite often, you know, every book that you write, it's never going to be for everybody. But, you know, you like to think that when you're starting to write it out, like everybody will love this, but really figuring out who is this book for and those pain points that you're going to solve, I think is so helpful in giving you clarity on all the other steps of the process. Yes. Um, so thank you for those questions. All right. So Jessica is asking, how do you figure out what to share in your memoir from your own life experiences? So it goes back to what I was talking about with the themes. So if there are certain themes that you want to include, then you would kind of go back through your life and figure out what experiences relate to that theme. Because again, you know, kind of what Chelsea was just saying, you have a target audience. So figuring out who that target audience is, what they're expecting, what they need to know, and then you kind of use that to, to figure out what you're going to share. Mm -hmm. All right. And thank you for that question. This one is a bit more technical, but Stephen is asking, if you have a book that's 37 pages long and 8,500 words, what type of book is it considered? That's a short book. <laughs> <laughs> it could be it could be an ebook. Um, you know, my experience has been that you you do need a bigger word count when you're trying to actually print the book because the book is going to need a spine. Um, so you can make that a digital product, you can make it an ebook, and you can just lay it out to actually see if it's big enough to make it a paperback. But, you know, it's, it's going to definitely be a smaller book, especially if we're talking about nonfiction, where, you know, in general, that word count is 80,000 words, mm -hmm. then 8,500 8, words is going to be on the smaller side. Yeah, and I would also just recommend, if you look at Lulu, you can look at all of our binding types, and Stephanie made a great point that if you if you do have a specific format in mind, so when you're in step two of visualizing what your book will actually look like, if you're envisioning that book to be a hardcover or a paperback, then uh, you may need to kind of double check that page count and make sure that it is going to look 
beautiful in in real life as it does in your mind. So great question. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, this is a really good question. So Arlen is asking, when you give your YouTube presentations, do you use an outline or do you just have a general idea as to what you want to speak about and then wing it from there? <laughs> that is such a great question because when I used, when I first started on YouTube, I would just wing it and my videos would end up. <laughs> it ended up being like 15 minutes long and no one would make it through the entire video. Now I actually use an outline and a structure. I'm pretty much using the outline for everything because it just makes the process so much easier. It keeps you from going off track. Even for this presentation, I've created an outline. So I use an outline for pretty much everything. Yes, I think that's a great, a great point. Yeah, when you kind of get in front of the camera, if it's just you talking and then you just feel like, oh, I kind of know what I want to hit. And then like, a couple minutes into it, you're talking about your cat or your latest haircut or like, you know, you can kind of get a bit tangential. So I think that is a great, great tip and a great question. All right. Let's see. I'm going over to the chat to see if y'all. OK, uh, let's see. So Kevin is asking any thoughts on how to layer multiple voices in a joint memoir? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> what is a joint? I don't know that I've ever read a joint memoir, so I don't have a lot of feedback on that. Can yes, you, that's a new one. Yeah. Can you elaborate on what a joint memoir is? Yeah. If you want to drop some clarification in, then we can try to grab it again. I feel like I'm kind of getting that we need to have you on for a memoir class. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, yeah, I was surprised I, to hear so many people are interested in that. So we'll have to have you back. Stephanie. Most of my clients either write self-help or memoirs. So I love memoir writers. All right. Well, be careful because we'll have to do that. <laughs> I had no idea that we had so many memoir, aspiring memoir authors. Okay. Um, let's see. So Chris is asking, do you need to copyright your work? Do you prefer self-publishing like Lulu or traditional publishing? So as far as what I prefer, I think it really depends on the person. What are your goals? So I am a self-published author. I have been from the very start. However, with that being said, when I started writing my book, I thought I was going to go the traditional publishing route. Um, so as far as copyright is concerned, you know, it's, it's technical. Every, everyone asks this question, but once you've written your manuscript, it's copywritten. But if you're looking for the actual registration, you can go to the Library of Congress for that. Yes. Yeah. And if you are using Lulu, when you go through our publishing platform, we have a couple of different copyright opportunities for you. Um, with, I would say, most self-publishing companies out there, you hold on to the copyright throughout the whole process, but it's, it's definitely important to kind of look in that fine print and find out if you are going to enter into a situation where the publisher holds on to the copyright. But uh, for Lulu specifically, if you go through our publishing platform, we'll have three different copyright options you can choose from. Um, and so definitely you can take a look at that if you are interested in going that route. And thank you for that question. All right. Let's see. Alicia's asking, my question was on the outline. There were four bullets, who am I, et cetera. How long or how much information in word count? Oh, okay. I think that maybe Alicia had asked this and we were able to answer the introduction question earlier. All right, let's see. I have been writing a medical book for eight years because the field has been changing constantly and I'm a practicing physician. How long did your first book take? Oh, I was just thinking about this the other day when I was working on this presentation. I really wish I remember how long it took me but it definitely took me over two years to write it because I, I just yeah. didn't have any clear direction on where my book was going. And that is the reason why I highly recommend an outline. It really streamlines your ideas. Yes. All right. Thank you for that question. All right. Uh, now, the next question is any advice when working with a co-author? Yes, I've written a book with a co-author. So what we did was we both uh, created an outline together and then we made a decision on who would write what chapters. And that made the process a lot easier Then we would share the chapters with each other, give each other feedback. And pretty much it was a seamless process. Yeah. So, I mean, actually, we're doing a, a project, a book project at Lulu right now. And several of us are having a hand in it. So I think communication is key, just like with any other project that you're working on. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you for that question. OK, so this is an interesting one. I know that in your presentation, you mentioned that an outline is preferable to do it before you write your book or you start the process, but it can be done anytime. And so Mary is asking, how can you structure a book that has already been written? So maybe if you're a little bit farther down the process, do you have any tips on how to get an outline started? 
Yeah, so then same same process. You want to just go through each chapter and figure out what the main point or idea is. You may not have as many bullet points because you've already written the chapter, but you can just go back through each one of the chapters that you've already written, look to see what the main point or idea is, and make sure that you're still putting it in a logical order. And if you haven't already, you want to do um, give some consideration to the chapter titles like I talked about earlier and make sure that it's engaging for your target audience and, and encourages to them to actually purchase. Yes. All right. Thank you for that question. All right. Bob is asking, I'm thinking of writing a training manual that would be available in other languages. Do you think Google Translate would be adequate or do I need to get a native speaker? Now, that's a great question. I have, <laughs> I have never used uh, Google Translate in that way. Um, I would get a native speaker because, mm -hmm. you know, that way, you know, it's going to be correct. Yeah, I mean, I thought <laughs> I was wondering, we're just throwing all the questions at you. You're just throwing yeah. them all just to see what you can come up with. You're doing fantastic. Of course. <laughs> yes. But yeah, we have uh, on Lulu, we have lulu.com slash partners, which is a page for uh, different publishing services that you may need. Uh, I'm again realizing now that we need to add Stephanie to that page. But uh, we do have a translation at Soul, I think is S-O-L is what it's called. They work with translators all, all over the world to kind of help you get that native voice. But I would have to agree with what Stephanie says. I mean, Google is very good at a lot of things, but they well, may not. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they may miss some of the nuance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so great question there. All right. And Christian's saying in a villa. So I think that, yeah, the 39 page, um, that would have been my guess if we had to fit it into uh, a category. A novella would be, I guess. Okay. All right. So Kiffin, who asked about doing a joint memoir, is saying she was talking about a family sharing a joint experience from their perspective. So uh, it sounds like you were kind of asking about switching voices throughout the memoir. So again, uh, Stephanie, I don't know if you have any insight into doing that or any tips, but well, the, the reason why I'm wondering if that would be considered a memoir is because a memoir is about a person's personal experience. So um, having a family memoir, I don't know that that would actually be considered a memoir. That I don't have a lot of experience on. I would look and see if there's anyone else who's done it. Like, again, going through that research process to see if there are any books similar to that and then kind of seeing how they structured it. But personally, I have never read a memoir that was set up with that set up that way. And I've never um, seen it done. Yeah. And I think, again, going back to the research that Stephanie was talking about, you can kind of find out how other people have done that if, if it has been done before and, and the way that they've handled it. All right, uh, Alicia, I think this is a really interesting question, but is there a method to naming chapters to be interesting and exciting? Yeah, that's a conversation all its own. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I could have delved into all of these topics a little bit more. Um, yeah, there is a method to it. Again, first thing in mind is your target audience. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about the pain points that they're dealing with, I try to keep that in mind when I'm creating um, my chapter title. So using my little pretend mm -hmm. example, you know, understanding your credit score for somebody that's a first time, right? Uh, first time um, homeowner, maybe they don't know about that. So that will pique their interest. Um, how much home can you afford? Again, something that will pique their interest. Yeah. I like how you said, instead of saying just credit score, understanding your credit score. So giving a little bit more enticement. So like, okay, that, yes. How do I understand it? It gives you a little bit more than just credit score. Right. So I like that. Um, all right, let's see. So I think uh, Kelly is asking, do you have any guidance regarding how to find competitor books? My book would be a memoir on medical strategy and misdiagnosis, but I'm not sure how to find similar books. Okay, so if you don't know any um, similar books, you know, based on the books that you might have on your bookshelf, I like to just go and look at the best sellers. So these are the books mm -hmm. within the genre that are selling the best. I, you can look at the top 10 and it's not necessary that you read all of them, but you do want to kind of peek in and see um, what they're doing. Look at their book description, look at their reviews, look at their cover, look at their title and just kind of get an idea where they're, you know, what direction they're going going in so that you can find out, is there a way that you can stand out? Do you have a different thought process? And all of that will help you. So I, I pretty much just look at the best sellers. Yeah, that's great advice. And Kelly, I would say there's a book that um, I was just published on Lulu. It's called 510 Candles um, by Linda Barber. It's exactly about 
um, you know, medical tragedy and misdiagnosis as well. So maybe that would be worth looking at just to get an idea of how she uh, kind of has, has pitched her book and her descriptions and all of that stuff. Okay, thank you for that question. All right, so I'll do a last call for questions. We're coming up on the end of the hour. Let's see. Oh man, all right, Jennifer, is, uh, she's dropping some good stuff in here. I don't know if we could answer this one, but can I write a memoir, but I also want it to be enough to make a film of, is that possible? So, I mean, I yeah, hey, Stephanie, up, up to you. What do you think about that one? So she said, is it enough to make a film out of? Yeah, so I don't know if you're asking about how long it needs to be or if you have any advice as to if you are hoping to see your book become a film. Any any advice there? Yeah, just in general, absolutely it can become a film, but you want to make sure that you are marketing your book because that's what's going to attract the attention of anyone that's going to turn it into a movie. So you want to have a strong marketing plan so that your book is selling and then people can see or the people that will make that decision will see that there's some kind of interest in it. Yeah. All right. And Leonardo has a good question. If you're self-publishing, uh, how do you decide a release date so it doesn't get overshadowed by more popular writers? And any thoughts on how to do pre-sales before the release date? So a two-parter two there. Yeah, so that's a marketing question. Again, mm -hmm. having a strong marketing plan. So a mistake that a lot of first-time writers make is that they wait until their book is finished before they start marketing their book. And that's why, again, this outline is so helpful because you can use this outline to start structuring that marketing plan. So you're you know, on social media or TikTok, on Instagram mm -hmm. or wherever, and you are presenting your content to people, um, this is a great way to kind of garner interest in your manuscript. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Thank you for those questions. Okay. And I just want to say, Jay says Google Translate is not defendable. So, <laughs> so for that question, yeah, I think getting someone who speaks the language natively is probably the right way to go. All right. Well, we are coming up to the end of the hour. So Stephanie, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us, for spending some time with us today. Um, you have a life of a writer. I will just drop the link in one more time here. Uh, Stephanie is wonderful. Her channel is great and tons of amazing content. And stay tuned. I mean, uh, like I said, maybe a memoir class in the near future. If Stephanie is willing to come back, then we would oh, love to yeah, have I would you. I love that. I would absolutely love that. Everyone that watches my channel knows that I talk a lot about memoir writers, so we can definitely do that. Yeah, well, I think you must have brought the audience over here today because I was like, well, I had no idea that you guys are so interested in that. So that is great to know. You're getting a ton of love in the chat. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today, spending some time with us. Um, again, everyone will get a recording sent to the email they used to register. We will also post this to our YouTube channel. Uh, I think you just find it at search Lulu University or at Lulu.com to find us there. Um, and go subscribe to Stephanie's channel. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Yeah, everybody have a wonderful Wednesday and we will see you all again next time. So thanks, everybody. Have a good one. And thank Bye. you, Stephanie.